So I'll be talking about something called Project Atlas. So a lot of the talks that we've uh, heard so far are talks about like what we're doing uh, in the Crypto Econ Lab uh, or like what the execution of the short-term roadmap is. This talk is uh, about a new project that just started and it's gonna be a lot more about the hypotheticals and you know what's gonna happen, what we could do in the future. Um, so less roadmap focused, more uh, opportunity focused. So, so uh, before I talk about Atlas, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about geographic information systems. Uh, and then we'll talk about Atlas and some, uh, some of the economics, possible economics around it. Uh, but just so for this talk, I'm gonna use the phrase geographic information systems data and geospatial data uh, synonymously. I know they're not exactly the same thing, but, uh, uh, but I'm gonna use them as the same. So this uh, image on the right, uh, this is kind of what a GIS system is. It's a system that creates manages, analyzes, and maps uh, all types of data. Uh, this data can be unstructured data, such as uh, you know, imagery taken from satellites, low-flying aircraft, or drones. It can, all be, it can also be structured data, such as uh, precipitation, transportation, uh, information about natural disasters, so like you know, stuff that uh, you could see in like a CS, CSV or something like that. Um, but the data having a location component is really what makes it GIS. And uh, just to put it in the context of size, like how much, you know, how much GIS data we're producing, uh, humans generate about two terabytes of geospatial information daily. Um, and most of that data is like, you know, personal data such as your Google Maps data or, you know, stuff uh, collected from your mobile phone, uh, but, you know, which is realistically not gonna end up on like a blockchain or a project. Um, and there's some information that's, you know, thrown away that's not useful, uh, but there is lots of useful data collected every day. Uh, from IoT sensors and, and other things. Is that per person? Is, is uh, that no, no, that's, it's total. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it, I think it's kind of important that we, you know, we store this uh, uh, geospatial information uh, and, and kind of make it available to everyone in the world. Um, it's, it's, I think, uh, one of the most important type of, types of data in the world, right? It's, it's a kind of a physical, repre it's a representation, representation of what's happening in the physical world. Um, and an example of that is like changing temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean uh, and how that affects like hurricane severity that'll happen, right? So uh, stuff like that is really useful to be open source and, and kind of freely available for everyone. Um, and it's also, uh, the data is like crucial in decision, decision making uh, for business, public policy, land development, agriculture, insurance, just to name a few, right? Um, and I think if humanity is gonna make better, better decisions about Earth and humans, uh, we're gonna have to know where to look. Um, and so part of, you know, part of this industry is also just not having the data, but doing useful things with it. Um, and then, you know, as any other industry, having uh, access to GIS information um, is gonna allow people to start companies or pursue research uh, that people would not be able to do before. Uh, so, you know, so what's Atlas then, right? Like in the grand scheme of things. Uh, so it's, it's new um, and, you know, the, the long-term version is kind of to store uh, all of humanity's important GIS information on the Filecoin network. Um, and this can include free commercial satellite imagery, com uh, free or commercial satellite imagery, structured data, uh, climate, terrain, agriculture, uh, you know, as we start uh, collecting uh, geospatial information about space, uh, we can, you know, get that in there too. Uh, but right now we're pretty early in the planning process. So uh, the, 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 the plan right now is to kind of start storing the free satellite imagery, uh, you know, from like Landsat or Sentinel, Sentinel which I'll get into in a sec, um, and then move on, move on to other types of data based on the products that we might want to build or what like the market kind of dictates. Um, and as part of this uh, satellite imagery, storing the satellite imagery, it's not just storing the satellite imagery that's gonna be taken from now on or the pictures that are being taken today, but it's also all the pictures that have been taken before. So an example of this is uh, their you know, uh, Landsat satellite, satellite imagery. Landsat is a NASA and USGS collaboration that was started in 1972. So they've been taking pictures of the Earth since 1972, and Landsat by itself has more than a petabyte 
of uh, stored imagery. And uh, they, so they have one satellite, and we're on Landsat 9 today. That's the image that you see on the screen. Um, and the, the satellite captures the planet every 16 days. So it means that we're taking pictures of the entire planet uh, 23 times a year, which if you think about, you know, you can see a lot of change happening on the planet and, you know, viewing pictures over uh, 23 times. And there are... So uh, there are a few reasons why we think uh, Atlas can have a big impact. Um, you know, I think one I mentioned already is, is storing all the information, uh, GIS information or uh, satellite Im information that people can do interesting things with. Um, but more impor importantly, as technology has progressed, uh, the physical and virtual worlds are, are kind of interacting and merging in ways that we haven't really seen before, right? So um, an example of that is, I don't know if there are any uh, Pokemon Go uh, fans in here, but that, you know, that game really took off um, six, seven years ago. And there, you know, this is like the merging of physical and virtual worlds, um, DAOs, metaverses, uh, stuff like that. And so we want to kind of make sure that we're able to uh, provide this kind of data to build those kinds of products. Um, and then I think one part that that is really important here is that we want to make sure that governments and like Cloud companies can't censor this data, right? The, the satellite imagery, the GIS data, ocean temperatures, um, all of this data is super important to humanity because there are lots of people who rely on it for their livelihood uh, in making you know, public policy decisions, housing decisions, stuff like that. And finally, and I think this is the most important, it's like a, a great use case uh, for Filecoin. And All right, so I think I'm missing a slide uh, from, my, uh, from my deck here. But uh, so there was this great slide yesterday about you know, what Filecoin's um, mission is, right? And it's kind of like to create, and I think Juan said this, uh, if you guys were there yesterday at, at Phil Austin, but it's to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. Um, and, and Filecoin, is, and you know, we do this with uh, it's a it's a crypto powered storage network, right? Um, and so these kinds of uh, sorry, just give me one sec. So uh, you know these kinds of uh, large data uh, projects really make it a uh, great great use case for Filecoin um, because. Because we have, um, you know, exabytes, or I, I think I think last count was over 17 exabytes of storage capacity on the Filecoin network, and oh, there there we are. <laughs> it came through. Awesome. Yeah. So this is the slide that I was talking about. So so this is you know the the picture on the right here is what uh, Juan was talking about yesterday of of the mission, um, and you know the mission really aligns with storing uh, the data because of, you know, there's, like I said, there's 17 uh, exabytes of storage capacity, and GIS data is, uh, there are like petabytes of data out there, right? And, and it's not only uh, petabytes of data, but that data is growing, and it's growing exponentially. Um, and it kind of, um, I think the slides are broken. Oh, there we go. So the, the storage providers, um, the, so the Filecoin, uh, you, economic system is great because storage providers have incentives to store really large amounts of data. And uh, in the network, the bigger the data set, the more attractive it is to store. So an example of this is a, a storage providers would prefer or do prefer to store like one one petabyte deal as opposed to a uh, thousand one terabyte deals, right? And, and kind of this GIS information, we store them in, you know, smaller amount of deals and larger amount of sizes. Um, and so this is great for storage providers because they um, might be willing, or this is great for storage providers and Atlas because they might be willing to pay Atlas to store the information or, or you know, for free or, or there's some unique economic incentive there. And, and storage is long term, it's accessible, um, and it helps storage providers because, um, you know, if, if we're spending data cap, which uh, most of you heard from uh, Deep's talk before, right, uh, they'll get larger block rewards. Um, and so 
the, the block rewards are, you know, in general proportional to the size of power, or sorry, it's proportional to power, which is kind of proportional to the um, size of the data, but so it's a great economic incentive for uh, storage providers. Awesome, thank you. And uh, so like just to you know, give context, the market size just for satellite and aerial imagery is combined to be $25 billion by 2030. Um, aerial imagery you can think of as like low fixed, low flying uh, fixed wing aircraft or drones or uh, uh, balloons and stuff like that. And then on top of that, the geospatial uh, analytics market size is estimated to be like 110 billion um, in like, you know, what, four years, right? Um, and then, so this makes it like, you know, a, a great uh, market size to go after because there's so much stuff happening in here. And just to give like context of that, the commercial satellite imagery, which is different from the free satellite imagery or low flying aircraft, it costs about $20 a square kilometer to store. The US is 9 million square kilometers, so that would mean that it would cost $180 million just to store um, pictures of the United States. But the world is 150 million square kilometers, and that's just the land mass. So we're not talking about ocean, sea, stuff like that. And so we're, we're talking about $3 billion of storage cost uh, with current uh, cloud providers. And that is not economic feasible. Uh, and, and this is where the Filecoin network um, has a really big advantage over traditional cloud computing. So uh, different business opportunities that we've thought through are business models. Uh, this is super early, so these are just kind of you know, ideas out there, but the, you know, the simple one is like just access to data and analytics, right? So like this is what companies do today, geospatial analytics. Um, they download some sort of, ge you, you, you give access to some sort of geospatial data, um, and then some analysis on top of it, you pay for that. Um, you know, much of that 110 billion market that I was talking about in the last slide, is uh, imagery, AI, and ML-driven insights, sensors, um, and geospatial systems. Um, and then, you know, as we move into more crypto-native economies, there's stuff like NFTs, uh, gaming, DAOs, right? So, like, you can build um, businesses around minting NFTs and having users do interesting, thing, interesting things with them. Uh, you can build a real-life-based virtual land game, so, like, you know, more advanced than the location-based games we see today on mobile uh, or desktop, uh, and then building different kind of DAOs. For example, uh, data DAOs, where, you know, it rewards contributors to the data, um, and, and consumers, of this, consumers of this data might pay for. So these are a few of the examples of the uh, of business models that we've thought to. But I think one thing, and this goes back to the Filecoin um, mission, that uh, is really important is like making this available very easily to today's uh, creators um, so that they can build the next generation of data products or, or any type of products. And uh, I don't know if you, if you guys have heard of Redpoint Ventures, it's a, it's a big venture capital firm. Tom Tungus from, uh, from the company calls this decade the decade of data. So, you know, in terms of accessibility, building on top of it, um, and uh, insights. Um, and then I think one thing that we should call out here, and I think it's part of like the Web3 culture, is not only about making data available for people to use, but also uh, allowing them to contribute to the data and making the data more useful for everyone else, right? So if you contribute to the data and make it useful for uh, everyone else, you should get rewarded for that. And that's not something we really see uh, in the Web2 world. Um, and then finally, I think, you know, we spoke about this a little bit earlier, but, uh, you know, being anti-censorship, right? Uh, making sure that people everywhere in the world have access to this data. Um, so yeah, so if you're interested uh, in, in uh, helping building this or, uh, you know, just getting to know what we're talking about here, have ideas, um, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, I, I don't think that email atlas at protocol.ai is set up or it's working, so the best way is to join the Filecoin Slack channel. Um, it's open. Uh, you can also DM me on the Filecoin Slack channel or find me on Twitter. Uh, my handle uh, for both of those are up there.